All right, welcome back. So today I'm just going to be going through how I would model some of the components like in SolidWorks like I would do for this lathe. And we'll just jump right into it. This is going to be the entire spindle part for the lathe. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the first uh, top plane here and I want to first create a center line because this is a cylindrical part. So I want to essentially have a center line that we're going to rotate everything around. And the length of this is 27 and 5 eighths. So, so we're going to start with that. Now, what I like to do is I'll start with the inside and i can actually build the chamfer that's at the front of this spindle into it and i'm going to bring that to the back and i want to make sure that this is lined up properly so that we have some of that already built in okay now i'm going to model in some of the features as i view them but some of them are going to be greatly exaggerated and that way as i'm working through the model it kind of keeps things put together properly you'll see what i mean though so we're gonna go over and we have a small section that sticks out of the back and then we have a couple seals here for where the uh, bearing goes into place. And then we have another flat spot. We have a threaded section. We have an undercut on the threaded section. Then we have a small bear or a large bearing journal up to another portion. This gonna this is gonna come over a good distance. This is actually almost halfway in before it has another. It is a minor step up, but I'm going to make it a noticeable difference there. And the reason why is if you don't, it doesn't automatically assume, assume that that line is a vertical line. If it's a very short one, then. But this this feature here is barely larger but I like to make it a little bit more exaggerated there. So that brings us up to where one of the change gears is on. And then we bring it over and then we get our low speed gear. And we get our high speed gear. Then we get a small section that is nothing. Then we get the Bearing journal. And then we have the last step here, which will have two more ceiling grooves before we have the front flange for the taper. And then the front nose of the spindle. So this is sort of our rough outline of how everything's going to be. Now, switch over to our dimensioning tool. Then what we'll do is we'll start with the diameters. So we go here, and it's going to show the radius here. We bring it down past the center line, and it will create... The diameter. I like to put the diameters in the center. So now this is the part where I pull out calipers and I measure and we've got that and oh I should probably also get the uh, inside diameter so that it brings that line below. Okay. So now we can go up here and we can actually take this part right here. And I want to make sure that this is in line with that. This is coincident with that. 
we are going to dimension this as a 45 degree and that will properly shape that and then we will worry about the actual dimensions of how deep and wide those grooves are later now let me go back to our next surface here and we have a two and a quarter thread So we're the close there, and we have the relief there that's two and an eighth. And then we step up to this two and a half diameter here, and we go for the main empty space here, and that is 2.65. We have our first our change gear surface and that is 2.64 so it is that slightly larger size there i guess to fit the inside bore then we get up to the larger diameter which is our our main gears and that is three and 16th and the next gear up that would be three one three seven five and we get up to our end where we've got some of these larger diameters here The bearing surface. That's barely at all. <laughs> it's barely bigger at all there. And we go here. This is our oil seal where the tapers where the nut for the taper go rides then we're gonna actually take this and we're gonna make that also collinear and that coincident and another diameter here and that's the flange and then for the L taper, what we're gonna want to do get some of this stuff more reasonable. We want this to be the actual dimension that we have specifically for an L taper. And I already did the math on this before. It's the dimension is like eight uh, eight degrees seventeen minutes fifty arc seconds. But the math comes out to 2972. So that is the angle of our taper. And the dimension for an actual one, I was checking some of the sizes, and it seems well that the angle of the taper is correct. The actual physical dimensions of this weren't quite made to spec. So... What I am going to do is I'm going to dimension this length. Which comes out 2.3685. And that's going to look really weird for a second because this some of this stuff was over exaggerated and that shouldn't be a major problem because what we'll do is we're going to start over here, work our way from right to left again, 
dimensioning out the height of all of these features or how much space they're taking up and that'll give us an accurate dimension for what we have there. So starting here, the threads come 2.7 inches up from the bottom and this is only that distance when we're going to do is we're going to actually make those horizontal to each other so that makes that so that these grooves are the same distance and then we can just dimension how far from the first groove to the edges all right so now we've also, as much as we can, we want to dimension things from a known point. And that's 3.5, because if we're not, uh, if we, if we're dimensioning things just one point to the next the whole time, that's where any measurement error, error will creep in. So I can, with my calipers, go up to eight inches. So as much as possible, I want to measure things within those eight inches. back to this we have that for our relief cut there now we can measure from here to this next step and that is five eight one two five and i believe that as far as we are going to get from there so next, we will measure from this point up. And, oops. <laughs> We're going to get a four and a half inch thing. Looking at this one, I don't know if that how critical that dimension is, but... Uh, seems like they uh looks like based off of this that they cut that a little bit over and that is an exactly eight inch so this puts us so that one that i thought was right in the middle was actually the midpoint of the spindle so that's nice and then we're going to measure from the middle up to the first step and we're getting a 3.3 .3 inch exact there and then from here up to the middle as well. They are getting a 6.55. So I don't know if that's supposed to be any specific dimension or if that's just the room they had to work with. We're going to get this really small step there and our distance on that is 2.181 so that one might not be a might not have been a critical dimension and so is just whatever room they had to work with as well And the last three point five six eight. Okay, so now we get to this part where things are looking a little bit weird. What we're gonna do is so we're going to make set those horizontal. We're gonna move this over, fix that, and that should be good. So since we have this dimension already, what I'd like to do. Take this, and we've got our flange width, 
I'm going to double check, but I think this is the same width as the uh, other one. Yeah. It looks like it's the same. Oh, it's a, it's, yeah, it's about that. I, I got 1.197 1. on one and 0. 0.1965 on the other, so I'm guessing they're dimensionally equivalent. And then I'm going to get the distance here to the end. It's a little bit harder on this one. Oh, that was the wrong decimal point. Okay, and that gives us almost everything. I guess I still have to get a dimension for this. I do not want that dimension. That is an easy one there. Okay, so I need to still get a dimension for diameter at one point along this to give us an accurate thing. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to measure this point because the tip is actually a bit worn. That will give us the best measurement that I can get on this part. And that is exactly three and a quarter. So now looking at this, I have in the bottom right corner, we can see that the sketch is fully defined. That means that we've actually had every single part of this measured out and everything is locked into place, so to speak. So what we can do is we go up to our features and we just do a revolved boss slash base. And that gives us the profile that we're looking for. So now if I just want to look over this a little bit to see if anything matches or anything looks off. It doesn't look like there's any sort of necessary changes other than what I want to do is I'm going to make here here and here a very minor fillet because these parts on the model are slightly rounded and then here because this part has a good size fillet rounding off the end of that taper and that gives us sort of our base model. So next thing up is that we have a couple key points that need to be added in. So what we'll do is this. So we're going to start with, uh, we're going to go to our top plane again. And on the top, so I'm going to reference the top as being where the key is on the taper or on the uh yeah on the taper for the chuck and what we'll do is we'll add in a sketch here there we go we're gonna put in a straight slot and this is the key for our taper the key on this is Three seven five, and now uh, one of the things is like I like to dimension from the ends of a slot like this. So you hold shift, and you'll actually dimension from the outside of a radius or an arc, and from there you can measure out. that this slot is 
inches. And then I can measure that the slot starts. Exactly 0.225 from the end. Now, what we can do is we can do an extruded cut from that. And what we'll do is we'll actually measure. We want the offset of this to be somewhere from the center of this. So I'm going to measure the diameter right at the tip of it. And that is a 2.65. Oh, that is not where I want to do it. That is, oh, one. Let's just leave that there. 2.6. Five seven five, and then I want to subtract the depth of it of the cut right at the beginning of the taper there, which is 0 0.025, and I did something wrong there, plus 0 0.025. I want to, since I did the diameter for this, I want to divide that by two first, so we're starting 0 0.025 below the first line here, and then we're just going to do up to next. And so that will cut everything above that point, and that will give us our taper cut there. And to include into that, we need to add two more features to this surface. That is, oops. This will need to have two uh, circles cut in it. And what we're looking at is one point two five as our distance between these, and this is our two. Uh, our two holes for the key, the uh, screws that hold the key in place. And I do not have my chart for tap sizes, but it's about 1565. If I had my chart up, I would be able to measure exactly what those are. What we're going to do is we're going to create a center line here, and then we're going to take the center line for that, and I think we need to add in a second center line here. Then we can get the midpoints of these two, and we can set them vertical, and that will center it in the slot, and then we can extrude those down. I believe these only go in a short distance. Yeah, there are a quarter inch in with a little bit of clearance. So we'll do 15 thou clearance on there at the bottom of the hole because they do not go through into the center of it. So those are our tapped holes that we'll need. Next, we want to start another sketch where we have yet another slot. And this one is a key that is used to essentially transfer power between the two uh, drive gears here. So 379 is what I'm getting for the slot dimension. And I think the key that was in here was cut specifically ground specifically to size to be as tight of a fit as possible for 0.025. That will give us our dimension there. 
And then the easiest point that I can measure off of is this one. So. And that gives me a one one point five two five. So that's nominally one point five inches, it seems like. With the uh twenty-five thou kind of taken into that. Not that I'm thinking backwards, that's definitely not right. But anyway, so that's our point there. What we're gonna actually do is we're gonna do it this way. We're gonna do our offset from a surface. We're gonna do this surface. And that should give us yeah, it's uh which side? Oh, it's not letting me pick the top surface, is it? So we'll have to do it this way. Again, so this one. Because I don't have time to... So I don't want to take the time to measure the outside of that again. Three nine five. So we all start three point one three nine five divided by two. And it'll give us the top of that. Now what we can actually do with this and other options, we just since this is all pretty simple. We can just say the depth of that. And so you'll see there, again, forms our key. And that one doesn't have any additional features onto it. Now, we've got one more key that does the power drive for our change gears. And that transfers all of, this transfers all the, uh, torque that we need all the power into the feed gears is what it is. So we get our measurement here. We got a point four five. I realize I, I'm gonna go back and fix the uh first slot, but there's supposed to be some allowance and distance. So it's a nominal point two five key or key but it's going to have some extra clearance so that it doesn't have any issues with interfering that one. And that is 0.775, so 25 thou over. That one, we will again measure out our offset being the diameter. with our cut being the actual depth. That's a much smaller key there, so that gives us, see, I definitely made a mistake there because that should not be below the surface. That's how you know you made a mistake with that sort of measurement. So let's look back up at this one. So looking at this, this was actually a little bit over. Yeah. 
looks like the nominal dimension is 40 thou over. And just to double check this. I know that that one was our dimension there, but I think that uh, looks a little bit off from the visual. Check on it. Yeah, it looks like I measured that under 70 thou. All right, and that will match very clearly the keyways that I have visually on the model. So now we can switch to the bottom side. So we're again going to do a sketch from the bottom. Or, well, we're going to use the top plane, but we're looking at it from the bottom. And what we're going to do is put in a hole here. And this hole is the one that locks in place our smaller speed gear and that is a 0.383 dimension and we are looking at distance here two point four seven three now this one this one i think is definitely one of those uh sort of fitted assembly type of things is that that gear is going to be put in place and the hole is going to be drilled through both the gear and the spindle to be in place so if anything ever needs to be replaced on this that's, that's something that's a dimension that's going to be really hard to match if you had to replace one or the other i'm guessing if you ended up replacing this gear you would want to you know rotate this maybe 90 degrees and drill in from the side to drill in a new pinhole for that if they're not matching up yes yeah, so that one what we're gonna do we're gonna extrude we're gonna look at this and we're gonna go from surface and we're going to do the inside surface and we are going to say up to next and that if we look down this you can see didn't cut anywhere on the top cut the hole through the bottom and it came out there and so that does the proper cut for that and then we're down to our last feature so now we're going to go to this and this one's going to be a little bit of a, a weird one is you can actually see the key is cut from the bottom however the key isn't actually a a straight cut because it's cut with uh it's you know it's cut with like a rounded cutter or something like that a keyway cutter in a mill and so it actually has rounded edges so what we're going to do is we're actually going to sketch this from the side and we are going to cut it we're going to sketch it as a slot now this slot we're going to do a we're not going to worry about the diameters what we're going to do is we're going to measure the distance from here to here. So the deepest point of our key right there comes down to 0.0875. Then what we're going to do is this uh, fancy thing is we're going to do take a point on here. And I'm going to do the same over here. And we're going to bring that point so that it's coincident with the line. Now what we can do is we can measure that point to the end. And we get a 2.545. And then we're going to measure this one as well. And that will give us... Point four three five. So now we're looking at this, 
The last dimension we need is the length of the flat part of the slot. And measuring there, we got a 0.8. And that'll actually give us the radius of the cutter here. So if we look at this, it looks like almost 0.5375. So we had, what is that? Uh, can't think off the top of my head, but that's, that's if I think correctly, that's like a, a, a 30 second over a half inch for the diameter of the cutter. And that, now all we need to do is we do an extruded cut and we're going to select mid plane. The width, which is 0 0.3125 and make our extrusion there and that will be our keyway cut for the uh i can't even think anymore right now but yeah that's that's the end of that so this is all of the actual modeled features that i'd put into this now when this is if when this is made into a drawing I would mark I would note down the dimensions of all of the threaded features on this but for the sake of making it not uh, really bog down the actual modeling I don't include most of the time any of the actual threaded profiles in the 3d model simply because it just takes up a lot a lot of space there so we're gonna go here we're gonna do this just a plain carbon steel because I don't know what the material is exactly other than it is steel and any of this other features are just sort of preference and I'm going to switch over here you're not going to be able to see it but I am pulling up the the pages for it so what I can do here is I can save this and we are page 57 Part number 19, spindle. And that completes that component. So that's all of the uh, work that needs to be done on that. And from there, this will get put into the model file and included in the whole assembly. And that's really all we have for it. I'm sorry if this, uh, <laughs> this might be boring for some people and if it drags on a bit, uh, Hopefully it's a good resource for some people who want, who are kind of learning a little bit of how to model and don't uh, know all of the features for SolidWorks that if they're doing something like this, they can kind of understand the basic process of how a component like this would be measured and put into there, or at least how I would do it. And that's really going to be all for, all for today. Uh, thanks you for watching. And Hope to see you in the next one. Bye.